Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Woodworking Wisdom. I'm Jason Bridge. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to look at something I classed as a zebra bowl. I'll grab one in a second. Nice thing from this bowl, from your point of view, pretty simple to do. As a decorating technique, really easy to do. You don't need anything special. You can go as spectacular if you like as using an airbrush. And that to me is a bit over the top. We can go with an aerosol cam. We can go, if you like, kid painting with some sponge and some paint. That's simple. So like I said that it's going to make it really easy. We're going to do quite a simple bowl turning technique. I've got Rich doing the camera gear over here today, possibly taking your questions and throwing them at me as well. So let's make a start. We're going to use something that's a bit bland, a bit of sycamore. Okay, we've got an eight by two bowl blank. We've fitted a screw chuck already. So that's quite an easy one. We're just going to put that into our chuck. And then I think we're going to show you what we're going to try and do. Look, so I've got a couple of options on here, different shapes, styles. So while he's on camera too, we'll be good. We got, right. so right there, different patterns. And I've got another one to show you by the end of this as well. So quite a simple thing to do. I don't know what you think. This one's done with a spirit dye and a gloss lacquer. But I think you can tell it's got a gloss lacquer. What's that, a bowl over? That just adds a bit more interest. Nice from this, you can still see the grain for it because you've got that spirit dye. So we've got a blackboard paint, or that kind of sort of whatever class is a blackboard paint, a block paint. We're going to use something a bit different. And then this has got an oil finish. So beach bowl. It just adds a bit of interest. I can still see the grain. We've got those patches of, all right? So that's our aim. Let's just put those out the way for a minute. So a bowl, as we've said, we've got our screw chuck and our blank. Let's just check things are tight. Ways on the screw. Just going to bring the tail stock up. We're obviously going to do the outside first. Just one little guy. And that's fair. I'm going to make a mark and then just drop that back. Speed wise, we're loading something new, so let's just take the light down, bring it up. That's interesting. I want to go forward, let's stick it over. That'll be better. Just going to bring this up, going to use the tail stop just as a bit of support in a minute. But I've just made a mark, I've already marked out my chuck door diameter. I've got that speed sizer up on the wall. Actually, I use it a quick measurement, give me a straight foot, which is that. Just as a quick guide of where I need to be. Do you think we're using screw chuck? Won't hurt to bring that ring center up. Now, it'd be nice to use the ring center because it won't go in too deep. And bring the speed up a little bit. 900,000. There you go. What should we have? Select a weapon. Uh, three eight bow gouge. All right, so we're going to do drag cut. Hand over the top. Check things are tight. We're going to start our outside shape. Just literally pulling round to me. So the flute on this is actually fighting me. Right over at nine o'clock, I'm tucking with that left hand wing. We're not resting the bevel for this. Feet wise, right foot is forward, left foot back. So I actually I can move forward on my body weight, back and forwards across this, just to pull that top out. Now this is just six bulk removal. Bit more. Gently pulling round. So we're coming down to my line. I've just gone in a little bit towards the headshot to take a straight step. A little bit more. In. There's our step for our foot. And gently pulling up round. You can do whatever size bowl you like. Okay, so we just knock the waste off quite quickly. This is going to be a bit bland, quite quite pretty, though, right? just in itself. Okay, let's take that tail stock centre out of the way. We're done with that. That's added a little bit of support. So I'm just going to take that back and get rid of that ring centre. So the ring centre is really good. It's made a nice central dot we can use later. A little bit of a ring mark, but it hasn't pushed into those fibres very deep. I've already made a mess. It's looking tidy. Okay. Point our centre height. That looks good. I want to clean up what we've done now. So I'm going to turn the gouge over. Flute now is facing about one o'clock. I want to come 
in towards the middle gently up to that step that's great a flat platform to sit on i can rest the barrel we turn the gauge over so we're turn o'clock and we're going to drive out so we're resting the barrel handles coming round. so i've had to move the tail stuff out of the way to get this one in gently pull it round. In a hurry, just let the gauge speed itself. I stop pushing with my hand, or it stops. A little bit of pace, nice and controlled. Rich has got a question over here, so let's have a look. What have you got, Rich? Is the wood green or is it dry? This is dry. Okay, so nice question. So we've got something seasoned and dry, quite important for this. Okay, so we're just seeing how it is. Um, Cold winded is wet bowl. Cut nicely the other week, wet wood. Um, I spent a weekend doing a hollow form course with a guy using wet material. Cuts a lot easier. So dry wood. Cut nicely as long as we've got nice sharp tools. So before I came on, sharpened everything, set that grinder set up. Used the wood cut set up we used the other week. Just taking a really light little cut up round here now, just to pull that shape in. I'll show you what I mean by light cut, just in a second. Let's get to there. Okay. This, is, this could be a bit interesting. It's leaving off my bow a little bit. I think with Rich, could just get a two or three for me. Look, let's have a look at this. This is the wrapping out cut. Flute on its side. The shaving's going over my shoulder in reality. So that's using that side wing. Quite a big shaving. I've got to bend down once more. Cleaning up cut. A bit finer. Different different type of shaving, okay? Then what I've just done, I said a fine light cut. Can you see the difference in those? Different types of shavings for that thing. So this has given me a really nice clean finish up round. This one was just getting our shape pulled in, the initial wrap out. So even from the shavings, you're getting different things to tell you what's going on. Just feeling my shape, fingertips are better than your eyes. How's that look? We've got to square this up. So let's get into that corner. So what do we want? Let's have a skew chisel. We can use it flat on the tool rest. Tool rest round to being level, flat on the face. We're going to use the speed jaws that we're holding the screw chuck with. So they're quite straight with that little lip. So all I've really got to do is square that up. I can down to here, a little bit just to blend in. The foot at the end of this will be blended into the bowl. So we will reverse it, clean that up. I don't want to come up more around the rim of the, or the face of the bowl here with the skew too much, because yes, it will tear the fibres compared to what we've got with that gouge. Nice, clean finish. Need to level off the bottom of that tenon. So we can rest the bevel. This is just to make sure we don't bottom out in the jaws. I'm going to leave the very central dot. That's my tailstock mark. That's useful to have later on. Okay, first bit of our bowl done. Let's get the abrasive. Let's have a look first what we need. Oh, we can go with a bit of 100, but we're not going to need it for very long. Got some abrasive I've got used. So let's see how that goes. Got four grades. Let's turn the extractor on. We've taken the banjo out the way. We've taken the live speed down. So we can generate less heat just off the sanding. I'm going to go 100 just to pull in a thing together. I've got a little bump line here, I can see. The problem with trying to talk and turn the chisel handle bounces. So I'll gently come up round. Feel what's going on again. bit low on my speed, I could come up a bit, so under 700 is a good place to sound. I'll pull my mic up a bit, it's better. So with the abrasive, if other weird things I do automatically, three layers, I fold it. That gives me something to grip on the back of my fingertips, gives me support. Plus back to abrasive works better, it doesn't break down as much, you'll pay a bit more for it, but it lasts longer. Gently pulling that out. Stop and have a look. First grade doing all the hard work. That looks good. So I got 150.
And again, I'm sanding where I know the dust is actually going to go down towards the extraction nozzle. At home, I'd have dust mask on for this air cleaner running. All those little things are important. One five, quick look. It should be good. So 240. Yeah, I'm keeping moving. Another weird thing that you know, if you pick up, use both hands. Actually, the left hand supporting the right. Then we get our 400 grit. Just check it out. I'm look, haven't sanded here at all. We're going to clean that up later. Now, a few of you, you remember what we sat there going, do you not rotary sand it? How I sand it with a, a powdered electric drill. You, you've all seen these. Get your drill running. We could we could do that. That'll get me in there. Um, let me just move that. Rich, what have you got? Right. So someone just wanted to ask what... Hang on, mate, Rich. I've got too many things stuck in my ear. It's embarrassing, isn't it? Do I what? Sorry. So someone wanted to ask what type of wood was it? They, they missed it. Type of wood? Type of wood? Yeah. Sycamore. sycamore. Okay, sorry. I got get pinched off with more wire, I think, off of there. Uh, right. Okay. And, and also, now, uh, Ma Maria asks, uh, what would you say was a minimum depth of spigot for a bowl that size? It's a tricky question to have now. This I haven't got a lot of depth, but I've got good circumference to grip on. Um, and it is a good question. Something I really get drawn into. We've looked at a little bit. You've got a shot of it there. I've just turned around trying to see if I've got it's over on the bench over here. But the dual size is going to match this totally. Okay, so what I'm gripping on with the internal grip of the sea jaws coming down. Let me just grab one of the other chucks off the wall behind me. That's going to match that diameter. I've marked it out being quite quite critical. In actual fact, that was the first thing we did with doing the bowl. So I tried to make sure that I'm matching the internal here diameter to that. Why? The more surface grip I can get, the more hold I've got. Because it's gripping all the way around. There's more surface contact. If we close the jaws down, I've got the key just over here. We know we get movement, and this is any chuck. I close them. We get no gap in between, but we also get a squash ball effect here. That means I'm only actually gripping in the little corner points. Not as much surface contact. You're also digging in on those points. It will damage it a bit more. So the size of that spigot can be important. Um, I used to have a friend years ago, a guy called Bert Marsh, and I hope I can class him as a friend, who used to turn bowls on tiny little feet. Right? And if you've got his book and you know who he is, have a look. He used to turn these bowls with these tiny little feet in diameter. Biggish objects, natural edge stuff, very hard and dense materials. You think you've got short cross grain fibers. I you know, often wondered why I never snapped them. So Rich has got another question. Sorry. It's, someone just pointed out that um, Maria met, said um, she said depth, not width. Okay. So the depth wise. Now, I've got enough to grip on here because I've got that lip. Okay, so we're going to grip here. If I was doing a recess inside, I'd probably need a bit more. Why not do a recess? Because I'm going to end up with a thin wall and expand into it. That can be a part. You're going to end up with something narrow. This is stronger than a little band of wood coming round. Also going to blend that in. So depth-wise, I've got enough to grip on here, and I know that lip inside those sea jaws with that contact will hold that enough. Okay, you don't want to waste too much wood. Okay, so hopefully... and. If you go longer, what you're gaining too much here, yes, you've got a bit more wood in the chuck, but you've still got that same diameter of short cross grain fibers. So that is something to think about. That is one of those critical points. I could hold this on a smaller set of jaws, but I'm ending up with a smaller diameter. All right. And the diameter and the depth all play part in this as well. But the diameter is more important, probably, Maria, than the depth of this, because the diameter is actually weak here. 
I've seen pictures. You've all seen pictures on Facebook of people where they snap that bowl off. All right. So that is quite an important part. Right. Let's just move. Oh, that one there. So we're going to seal the outside. So you could lacquer the outside later. But I think the sealer and the wax will work. So we're going with that cellulose sealer. Wipe on. Oh, a bit of sycamore has got quite a bit of colour, actually. It's a bit, a bit of a shame for... But sycamore is probably a prime example for this. Or very pale maple where you want to add a bit, a bit of interest on the surface. Let's wipe that over. So, uh, just going to friction dry a little bit. I also can burnish it just a little bit. Those nice fine shavings we produced. That'd be great to come around there. Move our brazier off the lathe, bud. We want oh, something to wax with. So I'm just going with micro crystal wax. If I can get the tin open, that's good. We want a little bit of that. So we're using Webrex, which is synthetic steel wool, so it won't break down. Webrex or Merlon, probably a better way of phrasing that for you. Now I'm just going to get paranoid and just check we've got size. So I can check the check before I take it off that screw check. It can be worth doing. Trying to leave the wax just a few minutes. It'd be nice to let it settle in, but time's that thing on a video. So let's buff that up. Ideally, if you can leave your wax for five minutes, you're going to get a better finish. It'll pull into the wood a bit more. The sealer's giving it a building block. Up to there. So let's have a quick look. I've actually got about five mil in depth. Gives you an idea. I'm quite sure I can hold on that five mil. I'm going to take this off, hopefully. Now, coming over our screw chuck, I'm winding it. Rattle that out. So, we're up to that stage now. We've got our foot. No, it's not very deep, but enough to get in there to hold and come up. I've seen some amazing guys over the years hold on a millimetre deep with a set of dovetail jeeps. I wouldn't have the nerve to. It's got a little bit of wobble on there, so let's have a look and why. So I'll take it back out, move it around just a touch. Pretty sure we squared that up. Might get a bit more. Don't go this time, we'll go with what we get. Play round. Better. Tighten. Now I know this is going to dig in a bit. So I pinched. Tool rest back in. Let the tail stop down so I've got a bit of room. Shape wise, you can kind of have whatever you like. Where do we want to start? We could start on the rim. We could start in the middle. We're not going to do a really thin bowl. If I was doing something thin, we did that bowl bowl a while back. Different technique. Need to come up just fractionally so I can get the gouge at the middle. Outside of the bowl, we have the flute facing outwards. Inside, flute facing in. Into the centre. So flute, that's two o'clock. Left thumb's doing a lot of work on this initial entry point. So if I pinch down, that's a come to stop point. Line up the bevel angle where we want to go. Drive the gouge down. Now I can relax my left hand. So that initial start stage is the important bit of locking that down. All the way to the middle. Get as far as we can go. I don't want to go too deep with this. Go back to that grip again. Finger and thumb. Bevel angle. Lined up where we want to go. We're about two o'clock. 
My left thumb pushes forward a little bit. Now I can relax. So create the wall. It's sat inside. We can drive our gals. So my left hand's right out of the way at this point. Gently driving around. So I can rest on that bevel. Go all the way. But my handle's travelling. Now, Rich, if you just leave your camera where you are, just a sec. Look where the handle starts. I don't know some of this is quite basic. Left hand again, I've taken out the way. I'm driving on that bevel. Gently coming round. Look where the handle's got to go to. There's a lot of travel for that handle. Just get that far. All right, so next one, line up cut. That's a little bit. I rolled my gauge up a little bit. Nice sailing coming off, that's good. Got to travel to keep our shape with the handle. Now, as much as we're going to do our zebra style bowl, giving quite a few things on the way, little tips and things. Still in here, it's getting interesting now. Bring the handle around. Rich, can you go to camera two? Fantastic. Right, I'm here. We're getting this lump in the middle now. Right. Why? Why are we getting that lump? It basically comes down to body movement. I expect we covered this a bit. I'm just checking my thickness, my fingers. So rich camera free now then. We start here. We come around, get to there. What gets in the way? It's all this. Right. I need to go on a diet, I think. Right. I think probably, yeah, I got on rich. All right. So from here, my limitation now about having to walk is my body. All right, so that's got to move. So when I go to do the middle bit, I'd actually take a step slightly backwards and my hand can come across the top to do that centre bit. So whilst I'm still hollowing from here, we started, we're in, we're cutting. Left hand just supporting. I get as far around as I want to go. Come around to my body. Handle can't go anymore. That's it. So now I can reposition over the top, take the centre. Slowly towards the middle. Flute's still about two o'clock. When I go to make contact with this, I take the gauge off. Let's have a quick measure. It goes back into the middle, fingertips, I've got a slight lump I can feel in here. I rest the bubble. The handle now is right back to my body. It's a long way out. It's difficult probably to see where you are. If I bring the handle out, away from me, across the light bed, we find our shaving. Now we can drive. That's getting me on there safely without anything biting. Fingertips, what's going on? That's not bad. Got a little bit we can go. Let's do the rim then. I'm going to come up to here. Now, I'm repositioning the tool rest. And this is quite an interesting thing. Where do we want to be here? What happens? I want to be able to push this. And this is things you can think about. If I'm here, my body stance pushes me away from the lathe. Uh, I think, Rich, let's just have a quick look on camera one. So from there, I've got to be there. All right, so keep an eye on where my body is. Fingertips there. Now, if I put my hand here, I can actually move to my left. We can push this across nicely. I can actually in line with what I want to cut. I can see it better. I've got more movement for my arms here. Everything's hunched up. Likewise, if I do overhand, that becomes problematic. All right. So let's do this rim then. So left hand in. I've got the tool rest bar or the stem projecting or protecting the hand a bit there, if you like. I've got a stop point. I've come into the middle of that rim. Let me camera two a minute, Rich. Just a quick one there. Good. I come up. That's it. We can push with a little bit of curve with this, I think. So, handle's coming away from my body a little bit. So, I rest the bevel down. Up, let's find our shaving back off the edge. Put the gouge. So, we're creating a little bit of curve. I think take a bit more out the middle in a minute. One cut in here, so I just find my edge, get in there nicely, come round. 
So I'm going to need to just dry the tip. Move too quick my hand there. Again, feeling what's going on. Trying to leave a wider trim on this just a sec. Overhand because I'm running out of body movement on my feet. For stability. To the middle nice and slowly. Don't hurry that cut. I'm amazed when I see people trying to do it really cut quickly. Give yourself time to adjust. So let's go bevel. Come around. I've just felt my thickness. Repositioning. Overhand. A little lump in the middle. Checking my shape. All important. Trying to maybe like be a bit slow with this this afternoon. Come with the tip. Right round. Build our shape. Let's have a quick look again. Got a tiny hollow in the middle. I can't leave it like that. That's better. So I think that stage we sand it. So I turn the extractor on. Let's get our grades. Banjo back out the way. We've got our 100 grit. Now, at this stage, important one to do this edge. It's like a razor edge, really sharp. So I can fold my abrasive, I hold it, just take that sharp corner off before I do anything else. I slip with the abrasive or anything, I catch it while it's really sharp, doesn't half hurt. Again, we're working with both hands. I want something to create a contour sander a little bit with a bit of sawdust. Put out the worst. You can hold that nicely. I can push into that, that helps distribute the heat as well off the abrasive. Feel what's going on. That's good. I'm going to take our little pile look. Next bit. So we can do the rim. quick look. Now I've left this quite a wide room because it'll work nicely with the decoration. So our 240 just coming up. Soften that corner again. Fingertips, a bit sharp on the edge again, so let's round it. One our 400 now. Ooh, got something I don't like right in the middle, the tricky bit to get. So let's drop down, gonna go down two. Work on that center. Really gotta use my left hand to stabilize things now. Quick look, that's better. It's all I had, little dot. A hard bit to clean up at times. So 400 again.
Okay, good. Turn that off. We will off we go. Oh, they're nicer. Want something just to clean the dust off with? So, burnish it with the shavings. Okay. Let's move our gouge. They can come off just for a second. Idea. Okay, so we've got to do our zebra type effect. Now I think let's just see what we get by firing the chuck key. It's there. Just gonna see where this looks like the cameras we've got set. We've got the overhead in a minute. This might work. We're gonna leave it on the chuck for a minute. That's gonna add a bit of weight and make it easier for me to work on. Putting that down to there. I'm just gonna reach up a little bit, but it should just okay. That'll work. I'm also going to grab this, a cutting mat, okay? Put things out of the way. Then we can do different effects. So if I bring the blue one back up with the stone, how do we do that? And it's so simple, okay? Major thing you go, well, must you have some masking tape, all right? It's that simple in reality. Now, different masking tapes will work different ways. Cheap masking tape is useless because it doesn't tear nicely. You'd think it would. Now, this isn't bad, but to do our effects, depends on what you want as a shape, you can tear it. Now, better way of me doing this, if I move my bowl just along a little bit, and this was from trial and error the other day, stick it onto something as a mat. All right, I've overlapped this end, so let's tear that out. We can use some of this. Now, I'll just say, good masking tape for do this. You need to play around if you can, but you want it to tear almost like a jagged line. Now, we've even got a bit here and there. I could kind of go, well, that's quite long. Do I want it that long? Depends on what effect you want. I can tear it back, though. Create an edge. That's a little bit fiddly. So I'm using the white tape. I'm going to go with something a little bit better in a second. Clear the ducks of it. I want to pin this end down, stop it curling up. Just trying to see where I am on the camera, you guys can still see. Tear that edge off. I don't want that straight. We can obviously stick it on. Push it down. Now I'd start on the rim, if I can get it where I want. Come down, feed it in. Not quite there. Got a little lump there, bring that round so I can get to it. One bit. I'll put my glasses back on there. So well, now I've got a straight line there. So how about take a bit? We can overlap it. So now I know where you guys are gonna go, and I can't see that clearly on there. We've also got this stuff. Right, this is frog tape. That's quite amazing. Actually feels a little bit different. Let's get rid of the edge I've already played with. You'll pay a bit more for it. But actually, from the point of view of what we're gonna do, it tears nicer. I can get an edge, I can come across. I can make it more jagged, so I don't want it equal. Other nice thing, especially from what we're doing this afternoon and here with the camera, You'll be able to see it a bit better. You get thinner line. Let's bring that a bit thicker into here now and then back round. Keeping the bits are torn off because again, we've got that rough edge that we want. Just looking at what we've got with the white tape. The green's so much better there. That'll stick down. All right now, I've gone long lines on this compared to what we had. It's a slight fold there, but I can make sure, push things down nice and firmly, work along. Bit we tore off, keep there for a second. I want another bit out here, it's nice and wide. Again, got a flat edge, but can we use that flat edge for a second then? We can put that in there, overlap. Doesn't have to come all the way down to the middle, this one. We can bring it around the edge. 
join that in. So I'm just overlapping those two straight edges, as in the square edge of the tape, to create a bit rougher. No. So you can see how I've got comes in. That looks quite nice. Got a rough bit here. Just bring it back in. Let's have a look at what we've got shape-wise. Where do we want to be? Want it something on that end? Tear that off. That looks good. Just going to bring this round the other way. Again, trying to get rid of all that straight edge down through there. Overlap. And here, nice thing we're keeping the check on this is adding a bit of weight. So whilst I move it round, it's not tipsy-turvy on the bench. Break that one off. Continue it up in here. Let's do one more. I want that bit there. We've got our white tape in the background. This is the bit that was already torn. So I've got a fold on the end there I want to get rid of. Oh, so you wouldn't believe it could be so problematic trying to tear masking tape. But to get the kind of effects you're after can be quite fun. That's oh, so a cheaper tape I found, just doesn't tear nicely. Oh, that's good. Oh, we've got that one on there, the white one. Just seeing where I can come down to on there. So overlapping. Let's clear these off. I've got the tape on the back here, which I don't know if you guys can see I've done there. Now I could change it to some green. We could do the same thing. So all I'm gonna do is up a line, overlap it, push it down. Again, the nice thing we're using a cutting mat. First of all, it sticks down nicely. It keeps the back of the tape clean. Trying to do this on the wood lives, not probably as good as your workbench. Less dusty environment will be good. So I can get my tape overlapping. That's good. Justin, right? So you can see that quite nice. That's good. My other favourite commodity, Japanese marking knife. So in here, there's nothing to stop me cutting through here. I'll shape it, get thicker, come back round, I can blend it in. I could do a series of these, exactly the same sort of shape. This one goes start thicker. And we'll do this on the other side of that bowl. So I've done five or six little lines. Gotta think of which way I've got to pull my tape up now from there. Let's have my knife back so I can get in under that corner. I'm probably going to block the camera just a little bit, guys. I'm sorry. So I want to think of which one I've got to pull the tape up so it's overlapping. Uh, create a curve. We could add our curve in here. So this isn't going to have such a torn effect. A bit more curved blends in. Next one. Get them there, that's good. Clear it up. Where should we go? Coming down nicely. Oh, seeing where they blend together. They don't actually have to come together. I could even swing that off of there. That looks good. Come up round, blend that into there. I'm going to use as much as we can. Got that straight on there. So we'll take him up that way. Trying to get a position. Got a straight edge on the edge of there as well. That's going to be fun to play with in a second. These bits that overhang, best thing I can do, chuck them in under. Another nice thing 
with the frog type is low attack. That doesn't mean it won't stick. It just means actually it's easier to peel off at the end of it. That way it looks better. Let's see if I can do something sneaky now. I want some of this. So I can trim a little bit off. Got a flat edge that finishes here, so I want to try and build something on there. Again, we can overlap it. So don't get thinking you've got to do everything in one long run. That bridges into there. Have a quick look on what we got shape wise. Something quite wide. So let's bring that to there. So again, just cutting a bit of type. We can build that in. Thanks for that overlap. Blending into what we've done the other side. That won't hurt. Getting a bit thick up here, though. That's my only dislike. Going to have to have something in there. So we'll blend that. And I will say some of the bowls I've been playing with, the one with the blue, I spent about an hour playing with sticky tape. Okay. You can vary patterns, effects, and everything else. I could have, let's have a look. Cut something off there. Might be a bit long. My fingers underneath will be good just to pull the tape up. That way it's easier. Can we have something in the middle? All right, so you start to get the idea of where, what we can do, we could add something more broken over here, like we've done the ragged edge, or we've got the lines coming together. Okay, next thing then. What do you do to do your paint? What have we got as options? I said I'd throw three or four different things at you. We can, let's do one. Just gonna put it back on there. It'll come around to there. We can go with an ebonizing lacquer. A spray. Makes it easy. Give it a good shake. I'm going to put the air on as well because I don't want to poison Richard sat here. He's got, uh, he's got his headphones on, so he's protected. Now, normally I'd run the lights, but I want to use the other half for different things. So, need to be a little bit careful. And I'm working, you can hopefully see where offside. And the extractor can be a good thing for this. That's got rid of most of the overspray. It will need to dry a little bit. So we're going to talk a bit as well. Let's take it back off. It's going to be easier to do the other one. I can show you two out of the three methods. Now, obviously, with the, the spray, the ebonizing, all right? Need to let it dry, you can put more than one coat on. That's a finish in itself under the bits that aren't going to be under the tape. So the bits that are under the tape when you're done, you could put a clear lacquer over the top. That will work. Next one, time to get messy. This is, I don't know if you can see that there, probably there, bring my hand. All right, so this is the uh, Chromacraft Rustina Primer, but it's a black. I wanted something with a, a matte black solid type colour. So having talked to Carwin, this is what we came up with. To apply it, you can have a brush. I'm not very good with a brush though. So how about a little bit of sponge. This was kitchen type washing up sponge. All I'm going to do, dab it on. Now the sponge will also create an effect. That makes sense. You won't get a solid, you get a texture. So let's try coming over the other bit. It's coming around a bit. We can go back in. I think there's enough probably in the lid. I can build up a couple of coats of this. Or just keep dabbing. Now you've got to make sure, obviously, when you put your mask and tape on, that you are pushing it down nicely. Nice and firm. Ooh, a bit too much on the brush or on our sponge, look. 
Work round. Go up here, look. We can go there. That's coming into where we got our spray. And you all said I was artistic. You said, okay. So you can get the idea of what I'm doing with the black and then need to let it dry. Maria gloves are better. All right, this does wash off nicely. So let's just clean that. We take our sponge and put it out of the way. You could use the same with the spirit dye. All right, so the blue, give me a sec, clean up before I get it everywhere else. So the blue is spray spirit dye. So we can use an airbrush and spray it on, which work really nicely with this because you get that translucent type color. And again, a bit like we sprayed the black, aim for the bottom corner. About four and five in your clock face of holding it and lightly build it up. Don't try and do it all in one heavy go. So obviously, I've got to let things dry a little bit. We'll see what it does in a second. We'll see where we get to. The black I need to really build up a bit more. I need to have a bit of fun now because this is a bowl we did and this has been done a while, so I'm hoping the tape will come off. All right, I don't know, Richard, I don't know if you can get that closer on. Okay. This one's a bit bigger. I sprayed this, so we've got our tape. So, hoping to do now, I don't know what this is going to look like. That's the break in my tape. We can peel it. Pull that round. Find the other edge. Where is it? Down there. One there, look. Out of the way. Okay. Bag stretch. It's so difficult trying to peel tape and watch the TV, you know. Peel that off. So this is done with the spray ebonizing lacquer. With my join. So again, if you let it dry, hopefully it works quite nice. Got a bit of tape stuck in the middle here where I've overlapped stuff. A little bit of tape on the top of there I can still see. So let's pull that round. Turn it round easier for me to get my fingernails. No. Biggest problem. Black on my hands. Pull that round. That's the overlap on my tape. So it's going to peel off better this way. First, uh, just adjusting and just trying to see where I am the camera. A little bit on the outside can be good. The reason we added the spirit sealer and the wax on the outside, it will stop things like this sticking if it overlaps. So it should give you a better finish. And peel that off. Where are we? Up around here. Just looking at the bar we've just done, just trying to see what it looks like. A bit more rust than this one. <laughs> Chase the tape, isn't it? There's the overlap. A bit more there. Just got to find that edge which is in there. Look. I don't know about you. Needs a bit of a blow, just a little bit of a clean. Got a little bit of over. over. That looks quite good. What do you reckon? That's so simple to do. Bit of masking tape, no special gear, laid out. Cutting board can be really good to lay that out. And you can imagine these. I've cut each of the bits, stuck them down. Quite big as a shape. Just trying to move things about, see if we get it in picture there. That looks better. 
blue one was a bit smaller and different effect. Longer edges cut to create that shape. Smaller torn bits just stuck down. Exactly the same principle across that. This isn't going to be dry enough yet. I can still see we've got a bit damp. But let's have a quick peel. Look. You can see what's happening. And that green, actually, that green tape is so much easier to use. It peels off nicer. Got to go careful because I don't want too much black on my fingertips. Let's do that one there if I can get to that. So you might not want to do, sorry, so I remember one doing away with it. All right, so you can see how quick we can peel stuff off, let it dry. Now, that's a, that's an important part. Um, my worry with this, it's been sat there for a week now since we did it. And I wasn't sure the tape was going to peel off nicely. The green tape, so the frog tape, I know is a lower tack. Actually tears better, so it'll be better for this because it won't tack to the bowl. The worst scenario with this is you start to leave a sticky residue behind where the tape's been on there too long. The wood fibers will absorb it. So it actually feels good. From here, what would I do? Spray it with a clear lacquer, maybe oil. It depends what you want to use it for. If you're actually going to put fruit in it, you could oil over the top. That will work, even on the black. The oil will pull into the white, help protect it. The black is already protected with the spray lacquer. All right, so just little things to think about type of tape, and that can play a real part in it. A little bit of a rough edge. Uh, if I was going to worry about that, you're going to get a slight edge on it. You feel it. Maybe that's part of the nature. If you've got too much, yes, you could rub it down, but you're going to scratch the black. You definitely need to lacquer it again. All right, so just little things that will make a difference. So what do you reckon, Rich? What have you got? Come on, then. You've got a question. Uh-oh. I haven't had many. So, I'm hoping my ear is going to behave now. Uh, Martin's asking... Are the black finishes food safe, please? As a food safe thing? The oil possibly. Now, to me, most of this, now if I don't, the rust pristina won't, the uh, uh, spray won't, and the spirit, the spirit dye could be because you're getting it in and then you could put an oil on the top. So if you're going to go that way, that would be a good way of working. The spirit dye will get into the wood. The spirit evaporates off. It's leaving the color. But... Are you really going to use food with this for a fruit bowl? That would be fine. If you're going to start putting salad in it now, you need to think a little bit more, okay? So that's a that's a tricky sort of thing. If I was going to go for a salad bowl, then yes, I would probably be doing something like the spirit dye, paint it, let it dry, and then oil finish after that and build it up. All right, so you can even go with a food safe oil on top. Be worth playing with a little bit before you start your bowl. So do a little scrap piece of wood. Just see what happens, all right? That's something important because the oil will darken that dye as well. And obviously with the, the dye, when you put it on, you've got to make sure your own grain fibers are really, really cleanly sanded or that's going to pull into those a lot more. Oh, they're rich. Uh, Nigel's asking, could you use burnishing cream on it yeah, to help burnishing smooth? Burnishing cream? Yeah, to help smooth the edges of the Ooh. black. Or would it, would it mess it up? Would it mess it up? Possibly. I know one here would be worried about it damaging what we've got as a colour. Next thing you've got to be thinking about is if you go with the spirit, you can't go put in a spray lacquer that is uh, a melamine or a cellulose base because it will, it will soften that spirit dye again. You'd be better with a water based on top or the oil. So little things like that are worth playing around with. Okay. A burnishing cream on here is like to cause more issues, but it might polish that in a little bit. All right, but it depends on how much it scratches that black. All right. So, Rich, you got any other questions on there? We're quite quiet this afternoon. But hopefully, guys, you can say, let's have a quick run around. Let's so say you've got something as a. I quite like the patterns, a bit of texture. Where you go, Rich? Let's go, I'll go to there. Look, right. All right. That's quite nice. You get the blue. I like the blue. I've got problems. My mother in law saw this and it was like, I like that. Okay. In the back. Definitely more like a zebra, isn't it? All right. So different patterns, different techniques, and so simple to do. Like I said when I started, um, I get a bit worried about coming up with stuff that's going to use real elaborate stuff. You, you might want something as a cutting board. You can have a chopping board at home if it's plastic, something as a sharp knife to cut it with. Something is some good tape. Invest in tape. That's the most important thing, I think, with this. And then figure out what you're going to color with. A spirit, a spray, something like a black paint. Got a whole range of different things there. All right. Hopefully you've enjoyed. It's been a bit of a different session. I'm, I'm filthy again now. I'm going to have to go and have a wash. 
So we will see you again, I think, on Thursday. I think Ben's got his Sunday. Carwin, if you're listening and you're on the plane going off to Australia, so if you're in Australia and you're going to attend Turnfest, that's in Brisbane, have a great time. I wish I was there with you. Okay, go careful. Bye then.